Hello and welcome. Welcome to the YouTube video on introduction to company law. So we will be doing lot of basics. So these basics will be useful for all the chapters. And I am CS Alok and I really hope you enjoy this class. And if you want to know more about Excel Academy, you can always get in touch with us on our WhatsApp number. First, let us get to some basics of company law. Um, please understand when I say company law, it is the most important subject. So at the very base of what we study is the Companies Act 2013. Please listen to this class and take notes wherever required. You can take screenshot wherever required because this is the basic which will help you for all the chapters. As I told you, whatever we do now is basics. It will help you in all the chapters for your exam. And this is for CS Executive. So for Companies Act 2013, the foundation is the sections or the act and that is the Companies Act 2013. Then after that and above that, along with the act, we have to study the rules. That is the different rules for different chapters of the Companies Act. Then we have notifications, then we have circulars, then we have orders. So this is all the things in general which we call as the executive power or the law made by the executive in our case it is the ministry of corporate affairs so the first thing is the parliament that is the legislature passes the companies act 2013 and along with companies act we need to know the rules the notification circulars orders issued by the ministry of corporate affairs so this is the base of what you're going to study so whatever i told you this is how it works in companies act 2013 we have first the statute law then we have the schedules which we have seven schedules which is part of that and then we have the delegated legislation which is nothing but the rules notification orders which is given by the ministry of corporate affairs so please understand some basics before we even go ahead so the first thing which you should know is that when we say act statute, it is the act of parliament and in companies act, we have 470 sections, which you can see next along with companies act, we have schedules. So what is schedule schedule is also part of the act. See, wherever we need excessive details, which cannot be uh, mentioned in the sections that is called a schedule. Now, very simple example for that is. Section 135 talks about corporate social responsibility. It has all the provisions, but we need some extra details. We need excessive details like what are the activities for which corporate social responsibilities can be taken? What are those activities? What are the permitted things you can do? It could be education. It could be slum development. It could be rural development. It could be promotion of sports and culture. It could be uh, something as donation or uh, contribution to prime minister national relief fund so all these things are mentioned in detail which is in schedules and csr the section is 135 and the schedule is schedule number seven so we have only seven schedules another uh, easy example for you is format of moa and aoa which comes in schedule number one then we have the format of the balance sheet pndl which comes in schedule number three so totally seven schedules are there. Now, apart from that, we have the delegated legislation, which is the law made under the powers conferred by the act. So we should try to understand this. So let us say parent and child. So this is the parent and this is the child. So till the child is 18 years of age, parent is responsible for the child, even legally. That is what we study. So same example, if you take Companies Act 2013 is the mother law for governing companies in India. That is the main legislature, the main law, the main act and the child just for you to understand. That means why I'm telling child because you cannot have child without the parent. That way you cannot have delegated legislation like rules given by MCA without the Companies Act 2013. So delegated legislation, it is the legislation which is delegated by the powers of the Companies Act. So delegated law or rules 
should be within the power of the parent act so the parent act gives you certain powers for example uh, companies act 2013 section 135 talks about csr and the rules come under csr policy rules right so the act is the mother law and delegated legislation is by the rules and i've given you an example so please remember this if you took a this bigger rectangle as you can see the bigger rectangle is like companies act 2013 and the smaller rectangle and square inside that is the delegated legislation which is given by the ministry of corporate affairs that means the boundary is this bigger companies act 2013 delegated legislation cannot be outside the boundary you cannot have a delegated legislation which is outside the boundary outside the powers conferred by the companies act so this is something which you should know very very well so when we look at it we have companies act 2013 we have mca rules so there is a common area only this can be allowed and this is what we call as legal so anything else if mca makes any rules which is outside this boundary that is completely not allowed and it can be questioned in the court of law and only then it will be effective so please understand companies act is by the people of india through the parliament we have 470 sections along with that we have seven schedules and delegated legislation is the law made by the ministry of corporate affairs under the powers of the companies act 2013 very very important for us to understand only when you know such basics you can go ahead and understand going further now that you know that when we say company law which we have in cs executive program company law involves and it includes the companies act 2013 which we study then we study the schedule so i told you we have seven schedules that is roman number schedules and then we have the rules rules is given by whom the executive which is the ministry of corporate affairs and rules have to be within the powers of the act that is what i showed you on small diagram also uh, just a few minutes ago you can watch that again if you want to if you have any doubts now when we say company law in cs executive what is part of your syllabus the first major part is companies act the schedules the rules this is the first thing then along with that the second important thing which you study is some basics some principles of company law jurisprudence and the theory of company law and case laws like you have solomon versus solomon you have lee versus lee air farming you have new horizon limited case there are so many more foss versus her bottle these are all celebrated landmark cases and this is what you should know so when you say company law it is not just companies act 2013 but it is act rules principles basics jurisprudence and the case laws and obviously we also study the doctrines doctrine of indoor management doctrine of uh, uh, separation of powers so all these things we study so these are the doctrines then most importantly doctrine of constructive notice then you have a concept like uh, corporate wheel and lifting of corporate wheel these are all the principles which we study in companies act so now let us try to understand so the law this is a repetition for you just to revise the law that is the legislature is companies act 2013 that is the parliament of india lok sabha plus rajya sabha passes this which simply means it is nothing but the people of india the people of india have passed companies act through the parliamentary system of democracy which we have in india executive is mca rules that is also a law so when anybody says what is law everyone says companies act or they call it as any act please remember what is rules is also a law even the judiciary that is the courts like national company law tribunal national company law appellate tribunal that is at and the supreme court they interpret the law correct the executive frames the law uh, the legislature frames the law the executive implements the law and frames rules and orders and notifications and all of that the judiciary or the courts interpret the law and they also 
frame laws by way of judge-made laws, which we call as case laws or judicial precedents. Judicial precedents. Okay? This is something which you should know very, very well. Very important for you. Okay? So, if anyone says who frames the laws, it is the legislature, but also executive and judiciary makes laws in form of rules, regulations, notifications, orders, and obviously the case laws and judicial precedents. All right. So, some people may ask, sir, what is this NCLT, NCLAT? So, this is the court. So, earlier, so before 2013 Act, before 2013 Act came into picture, before Companies Act 2013, we had the Company Law Board, we had the High Court Jurisdiction, we had the BIFR, that is Board of Indus uh, Industrial uh, and uh, Financial Reconstruction for Sikh companies. Sikh Industrial Companies Act used to be there. Then we even had Civil Court. People could even go to Civil Court for any problem which they have in Companies Act 1956. So they wanted to, the government wanted to consolidate all this and they brought a beautiful system where all these courts are now consolidated into National Company Law Tribunal and Appellate Tribunal. And if you want to appeal, definitely you can appeal not to High Court but directly to the Supreme Court. So the High Court jurisdiction has been completely removed. The appeal goes directly to Supreme Court. You might have seen the Cyrus Mystery case and uh, Tata. The Tata and Cyrus Mystery case that is all the way to Supreme Court. It has gone for appeal, right? So that is the possibilities which is there. And High Court jurisdiction is removed and it is a specialized court. It is really uh, very good. So as you know, Companies Act rules schedule. So this is what we have studied. Then we have case laws. Then we have the notification circulars given by MCA. We have NCLT. We have doctrine, jurisprudence, concepts. So all these things is what we study. This is the basic for you. Many people don't understand basic. That is why on YouTube, we wanted to put this basics class. If you know basics, you can understand anything. And one very basic thing is forms of business. You know very well. Broadly speaking, we have for profit entities and not for profit entities. Not for profit is what? Trust, Section 8 company. Section 8 company means a charitable company. Okay, that is the company is for a certain cause, they cannot distribute profit to their shareholders. They cannot give dividends. They cannot share the profits. Then you have society, trust. Okay. You have the Public Trust Act, Indian Trust Act, Societies Registration Act. So all these are not for profit. So even if they make a profit, we call it as excess of income over expenditure. We don't call it as a profit and they cannot distribute it to the founders or anyone in that particular organization. It is for the society. It is for the public good. It is for social impact. Next, we have for-profit entities. Not for profit and for profit. For profit is very simple. Limited liability partnership, sole proprietorship concern, Hindu undivided family, which is in India, association of person, cooperative society, not society, cooperative society is for profit. Then obviously you have company, you have partnership firm, you have one person company, all these uh, things like statutory bodies like LIC, uh, SBI. So all these are nothing but different forms of business. So you should understand that only companies have two decision making bodies. In all these things, only companies are having two decision making bodies. So what is that two decision making bodies? We should know very well. One is the board of directors that is management of the company. And the other is the members of the company or shareholders, whatever you want to call. And they are nothing but the basically owners of the company, right? So there are two decision-making bodies. But if you see proprietor, LLP, HUF, uh, everywhere, there is only one decision-making body as per the statute, correct? You can have different uh, uh, organizational setups, however you want. But as per law, there is only one decision-making body. But in a company, board of directors also can decide and they can pass resolutions. Members also can do. And it has been uh, divided accordingly uh, to them. Okay. Next, what are we trying to understand? Let us try and get a picture. 
so in company as i told you two bodies take decisions so what are these two bodies which take decisions management and ownership management is board of directors and members or shareholders is the ownership so when we say management and ownership obviously the most important is owners or shareholders so how do they meet so how do they take decisions they do meetings so how do they meet if it is a shareholder they meet minimum once in every year and we call that as a annual general body meeting and if there is any urgent matter between two agms they can meet we call it as a extraordinary general meeting egm agm and egm so these are the two things uh, two ways in which they have a meetings now what about board of directors see please understand first is your shareholders second is your board of directors board of directors take care of the company on a day to day basis they are more active they are involved every day so board of directors when we say they have board meetings so when board of directors meet officially we call it as board meetings so in board of directors there are two types board meeting and committee meeting committee is nothing but below the board so let us say there are nine people in the board of directors so we'll say okay audit committee we have four people csr committee four then uh, we have a nomination and remuneration committee that is nrc then uh, shareholders or uh, stakeholders grievance committee so we you can have different uh, people who are nothing but board members who are given subdivision of the tasks like the most important committee is obviously audit committee without that you can have lot of financial uh, frauds in companies so they are nothing but part of the board so people in audit committee should be having experience in obviously finance and audit and accounts and tax and things like that and they will go ahead with all the other compliances which are required so that is about the meeting so broadly speaking now you tell me let let me know in the chat also what are the types of meetings which are there so for shareholders there are agm a and egm so please do type it in the chat try type it in the comments uh, we will know if you are active and if you understood and for board of directors we broadly call it as board meeting that is a uh, board meeting and committee meetings so how many types of meetings are there for board broadly speaking two and general meeting shareholders agm and egm in general so the question is you have management ownership so how do they take decisions they do meeting we understood that now how do they decide in the meeting how do they decide how do you measure you need to have a rule and that is nothing but the rule of majority that is what we call as rule of majority now very simple if you and your friends your five people are there and you want to go out for a movie so you'll say okay majority if three people say we go to this movie we'll go there if three, two people say the other way they lose the vote so it is what we call rule of majority correct same logic applies here in rule of majority even in company you decide by rule of majority but when we say rule of majority first we have simple majority and then we have special majority or what we call a, a special way of deciding by way of more people agreeing so simple majority is simple suppose there are nine directors and all nine are coming to the meeting so attendance is 100% so you are deciding something if five people say yes and four people say no we have a simple majority that means we have more than half more than half that is a simple majority that is there uh, in every place where we go for voting correct so this is board resolution that how do you decide by way of a simple majority you have suppose nine people all nine come five and four is how you look at it now in a shareholders meeting please remember in shareholders meeting also you have ordinary resolution and special resolution so what is this ordinary what is this special we need to understand in ordinary resolution it is nothing but simple majority that is more than 50% uh, 
they say 51%, you should not say that. You should say more than 50% or more than half. That is the correct terminology. Okay? This is what many students get it wrong. Let me know in the comments if you thought it is 51. No, it is more than half. It can be 50.01, whatever, right? And we always count based on people who are uh, present in the meeting. So more than half vote in favor. Then we call it as an ordinary resolution. But in Companies Act, there are some decisions which is, let us say, for example, amendment of the Articles of Association. It is a serious matter. The Articles of Association is a document which tells you about the bylaws of the company. It talks about the day-to-day -day functioning of the company. Now, if you want to make changes there, it is a big decision. Since it is a big decision, you need majority of your shareholders to agree. So, Companies Act says, for many things, including our example, amendment of our articles of association, you need to have maximum people to agree and Companies Act calls it as special resolution. Companies Act calls it as special resolution where three times more, that is three-fourth majority. So for simple words, we say 75% or more or we can always say three-fourth majority. So votes cast in favor is three times more than votes cast against. This is important for us to understand. So let us just have a quick re recap. Company. So in company, you have separate management. That is, first is the management, which we call board of directors. And the second one is called ownership. And two bodies can take decisions. So both these bodies can take decision, owners and shareholders, owners and management. Management means board and owners means shareholders or members. Okay. Please understand, how do they decide? They go for meetings. They sit and uh, talk to each other. It may be online or offline. For board of directors, it could be online, offline. It is permitted. For shareholders, as of now, it is a physical meeting, but e-voting is allowed. So, board of directors can meet the everyone together. We call it as board meeting. Or only few of them for different responsibilities which they take like audit committee, CSR committee, etc. Committee meetings, we call that. Then for general meetings, it is AGM and EGM. Once a year, you call it as AGM. And EGM is between two AGMs. Suppose there is something very urgent. You cannot wait for next year AGM. Then you can organize an EGM. So this is what you should understand. Uh, and then you should definitely know about how do they decide. Board resolution, which is a simple majority. Right, And when we talk about members, there are two types. The company law says you have ordinary resolution, which is a simple majority and special majority or special resolution, which is three fourth majority. So important things in company law has been given this particular responsibility. I hope that is uh, clear. If you understood, please let me know in the comments. And tell me how many decision-making bodies are there. So type in the comments, two decision-making bodies. Two decision-making bodies are there in company. Very important basic concept, which many people don't understand. It's very unique to a company. Okay. So what do they do? The management. The management, what do they do? They take care of the day-to-day -day affairs of the company. Day-to-day -day affairs of the company. Right? What do the owners do? Owners, obviously, they give money for the company to run the business. That is capital. They may give equity capital. They may give debt capital. Equity is basically what we call real owners. Debt is nothing like but a loan. It's like borrowing. Okay, it's a borrowing. Company borrows money. Company has to return the money. So then what about equity? Company need not return the money, but company should help and grow the money, which we call wealth maximization. So shareholders or owners have the overall powers of the company. They give the capital. For example, they give 2 crore. That is the capital. So what is one basic concept which you should always remember? One is the USP. What? There are two decision-making bodies in the company, board and the owners. Now, who appoints directors? Obviously, it is the owners of the company, shareholders who appoint the directors. So you tell me, can directors be removed by shareholders? Can directors be removed by shareholders? 
answer is yes shareholders can remove the directors next question can directors remove shareholders can directors remove shareholders no director can never remove shareholder because shareholder is the owner and director has been appointed by shareholder for managing the company they are the executive body for what we call managers so shareholders can remove directors but directors cannot remove shareholders okay so what is the general rule what is the general rule for appointments who should appoint always members should appoint the board of directors who should appoint shareholders or members should appoint the board of directors that is the final authority this is the general rule so when do shareholders appoint directors obviously in the general meeting it can be agm or it can be egm you should know this very very well now everything in law has a exception correct so what is the exception to the general rule exception to the general rule is what we call as temporary appointments okay temporary appointments what happen that means when can directors be appointed by directors what is the general rule general rule is members or shareholders appoint directors members or shareholders appoint directors but i am telling you when can directors appoint other directors this is what we call as temporary appointments first one is most important we call it as additional director so an additional director is appointed by the board by the board of directors between two annual general body meetings that means suppose we had a, a agm in september now in december we want to appoint a director we cannot wait for next agm and we don't have time to organize egm extraordinary general meeting so that time the board can appoint what we call as additional director and the additional director can be in the company till the next agm till the next agm or the last date of the agm okay now what if we want to continue with them even after the agm that time we have to regularize them so in the next agm this additional director has to be regularized by passing a resolution saying that from additional director we will make you a regular director that is what we call normally as a director right so this way it is going to be beneficial for both so what is the general rule who can appoint directors only shareholders can appoint directors but there are some exceptions what is the second exception alternate director so this is not very prevalent on a day to day but we should know the law uh, nowadays it's not very practical but you should know the situation alternate director is a substitute alternate director is a substitute what substitute that means alternate director is a person we appoint when our regular director goes outside india for 3 months or more continuously if our regular director any one person goes outside india 3 months or more continuously if we have to take care of business and somebody should be there to run it we will appoint a substitute alternate director like in cricket and football you have substitute right so one player goes out another player comes in same way so if the main player comes back substitute will go back in cricket at least so same way if alternate director whoever we appoint is there his position is not permanent if the original director comes back alternate director will lose his position automatically but today this is not relevant because now in online world people can do their work as director even if you are in different country through online meeting uh but this is this provision is there from 1956 but today it's not very prevalent third thing when can board appoint a director casual vacancy suppose there is a death of a director director has been hospitalized etc this thing can be done so there are three situations where directors can appoint other directors additional alternate and casual vacancy in all other scenario we need to follow the general rule where directors are appointed in the general meeting okay i hope this is clear if you have any doubts relating to this you can please ask me in the comments and i will definitely reply to you now we go to further basics next basic is what 
USP, you know, what is the USP? Two decision making bodies. You know this very well. Never forget that. Write it in the exam also. So now let us try to understand in terms of what powers do companies have? What are the powers which companies have? Let us try to understand that. Management and ownership is there. So management and ownership, always we need to have a check and balance because there are two different bodies and they have different powers. Of course, supreme power is always with the owners, but we need to have a check and balance. The directors should ensure that owners don't misuse their powers. Same way, owners should ensure that directors don't misuse their day-to-day -day powers which they have because they have more control on the day-to-day -day affairs. So any sort of scam, financial misdoings, all that is possible by directors. So owners or shareholders should always have a watchful eye. Okay. So when we talk about powers, the Companies Act gives you different powers. So section 179 is one thing you should know. Section 180 is the other things. Please remember, these are all basics. I'm trying to cover all the chapters in the basics. That means if you know these concepts, all the chapters become easy for you. That is how we like to teach. And that is why we are doing this. So management and ownership. The checks and balance should always be there. If owners have more power, then directors cannot function. If directors have more power, then they may misuse the power and they may get into financial frauds and other uh, crimes, okay? White collar crimes. So section 179 talks about powers of the board. That means what can the board of directors do without permission from the shareholders? That means there is a general permission. That is general powers given to board of directors. When I say without permission, not that they're doing something secretly. The Companies Act 2013 itself gives them the powers. Company Act 2013 gives powers, which we call general powers, which is mentioned in section 179. So powers of the board, where the board of directors can take decisions without permission of shareholders because they already have a general power, a general permission given to directors by the Companies Act 2013. I hope that is clear. Now, same way, Section 180. This is called as restrictions on the powers of the board. So 179 is what? Powers of the board. What can board do independently, which they have the powers. Next is restrictions, ownership. Only members have some powers. Section 180 says that restriction, that means board of directors can take decisions. Definitely they can take decisions. But these decisions are subject to approval of the shareholders or members. So just to stop them from doing whatever they want, this provision is there where section 180 ensures that directors don't get too many powers for any bigger decisions or where more money is involved or more risk is involved directors should go to the shareholders and shareholders should take a decision and confirm it that is only restriction on the powers of the board so don't think board cannot do they can do it with the permission of the shareholders so this is the broad things you should know so we studied about the two decision making bodies how do they take a decision then most importantly we got an idea about general power and when directors can appoint other directors in board meeting next important thing very very important board resolution ordinary resolution special resolution these are the three things which we have studied right so these three things you need to understand they are nothing but resolutions what is a resolution in simple english it is nothing but a decision so it is a decision taken by the board we call it as board resolution decision taken by members by simple majority ordinary resolution decision taken by members with special majority we call it a special resolution right so these are the things which we should know now let us try to understand this in detail very important 
how does a company take a decision how does a company take a decision very very important for you to understand so how does a company take a decision the first thing we call it as motion motion that is a proposal there is a decision to pro uh, there is a proposal okay should we appoint so and so as a director so it is a proposal then we have seconding of the proposal so that means when one director proposes one particular aspect any other director should support the motion or should support this particular proposal so the decision taken will be like that so first is the motion of second is to support this particular decision okay and the third one is what we call as discussion so before when we take a decision or to pass a resolution first is there is a proposal okay should we appoint mr so and so as a director the second one says yes we should appoint third one we have a discussion so what happens in discussion so the discussion will be mainly about whether that person is good i'm giving example of appointment of director it can be anything so you will discuss and deliberate what is his qualification why should we appoint are we going to get some benefit to the company so discussion and deliberating then the fourth step is dissent so somebody may say no no this person is not good we will do it or want to appoint them so that is dissent next fifth step is after all this discussion dissent everything you will actually put the discussion to vote see now when you first have a proposal then you have seconding of the proposal somebody supports then you discuss all the uh, pros and cons then somebody may say no we don't want this they may dissent to this particular decision no problem then finally you need to measure right you need to count how will you know each one has told one thing you need to vote whether it is in parliament they need to vote whether it is in election we need to vote whether it is in company they need to vote there is the only way to measure you need some number to measure and that number and that scale is nothing but voting so how do you vote it is a method to measure it can be e voting it can be postal ballot it can be as simple as show of hands please remember one very basic thing show of hands is nothing but raising your hands show of hands is the default way or the most basic first thing way how to vote method of voting show of hands first is always show of hands after show of hands if you want you can go for a postal ballot or a polling with by using polling paper you can go for it but basically show of hands is your default way of voting in a company please remember that don't think for everything they're going to have a postal ballot online e voting nothing all that is if required for a simple decision always show of hands is your default way of voting so after you vote what happens obviously you need to count the votes who has won who has lost what has happened so for example the company has uh nine directors nine directors only seven people are present in seven people only five people did the voting okay that means two people abstained they came for meeting but they did not vote then for in favor to appoint the person three people said yes two people said no so we have nine directors seven came five voted two did not vote abstained and in the five people who voted five said yes and two said no so basically the resolution is passed that yes so and so person should be appointed so that is what is the meaning so after the counting is done resolution is passed that is the seventh step and how did we count the resolution you already know it by rule of majority so in rule of majority it is simple rule and special rule so but end of the day what do you mean by resolution is passed what is it please tell me it simply means now the decision is final because you had the motion you had the support you had the discussion deliberation even some people said no they had a dissent then you put it to vote 
then you count the votes that means the vote got passed in our example now decision is final you have to adhere it the decision is binding you cannot reverse it once you have decided it so simple rule and special rule of uh, voting so that you know very well board meeting committee meeting it is board resolution and in general meeting it is agm egm that is ordinary resolution or special resolution so remember special rule of majority is only in general meeting in board meeting we have only simple board resolution in general meeting we have both ordinary resolution and special resolution which is 75% or more votes cast in favor is three times more than votes cast against that is what we call special resolution then after this what happens finally we have to record the summary whatever happened no we need to record the summary that summary is nothing but what we call minutes there is a document where we write down what all the things happened in company who said what what is the decision taken who was present who was absent all that is in one document which we prepare as per section 118 minutes of the meeting record the summary of the meeting and the decisions taken so you will record the summary please remember the word here is summary it is not a exact translation it is not a transcript minutes is not transcript it is not your subtitles in the movie transcript what is a transcript it is each and every word which is spoken that is transcript minutes is not transcript transcript is different minutes is only a summary important points most important points and decisions taken so this is how it works so let us quickly understand very very important for everything you uh, study in company law in all the chapters you study in the syllabus company law you have more than 20 chapters but basically the entire companies act 2013 when you study for everything company has to take a decision and have a resolution so how does that do how do they do that motion support discussion deliberate dissent putting to vote counting and then resolution is passed by simple or special majority and finally we record the summary in the minutes which is most important a company secretary is responsible for this so please be very careful so what is minutes next you should understand very important see i'm doing the basics for complete details we can do more classes but first is basics without basics you can't do anything basics if you are clear no if you if you know whatever i taught in this class in company law you can answer any question really that is the basics you should know details will come details if you want you can even join our coaching classes that is a separate thing coaching classes with mentorship will help you but basics is what you need to first know if you want to join coaching you can always get in touch with our team so minutes is section 118 what is it i told you minutes is a summary of the meeting and minutes is always useful for future more than present that is the evidence minutes is the evidence correct for future whatever whether this happen in the company or not if you want to know you will know the evidence that the company conducted the meeting meeting actually happened that is the evidence attendance did all the directors come was everybody part of the decision again that becomes evidence for future suppose there is a court case this document becomes so useful for you also suppose there is some people who gave a dissenting opinion means that did not agree to the proposed resolution that is what we call dissent the dissent is very very important i'll tell you why now for example let us say there were seven directors in a company six directors are one team the other director is in the opposite view now six directors together want to do a fraud and they decide together and they pass the resolution now this one director knows about the fraud but he can't do anything because by rule of majority 6 is to 1 so they have uh, passed the resolution so what will happen this one person will say no resolution will be passed against him no problem but he can tell that whatever i have spoken 
it is my dissenting opinion it means i did not agree to your resolution it's okay the resolution is passed i can't do anything i am minority you are majority but my dissent has to be recorded in the minutes my dissent has to be recorded in the minutes that means tomorrow suppose this fraud comes out and these people get caught <clears throat> then uh, the government authorities will tell all seven directors are responsible because they have passed the decision together then this seventh person can tell no sir i had said no i knew it is a fraud i dissented my opinion and i also told them to record in the minutes you can refer the minutes of the meeting so in future whenever there is a dispute or litigation or a court case again that becomes dissent and the seventh person will be innocent because he has evidence and proof that he had recorded his dissent he had not agreed the decision but because there were seven people six people said yes and he was the one who said no the resolution got passed because six is to one resolution got passed but end of the day it is it is a fraud and nobody can take away that so this is what you need to understand these are some basics if you like this class please do give a thumbs up we can do more basic classes of company law and as usual if you want to know anything about our excel academy you can whatsapp us this is our whatsapp number we have two whatsapps number Seven four zero six zero seven seven four zero six. So anything, whether you want coaching classes, whether you just want to clear some doubts, or simply you like this class and you want to say thank you, please get in touch with us. We put lot of effort for you guys, so please do get in touch with us. We are there to help you. So I hope you like the class. If you need more classes like this on YouTube, please do comment. and if you want to join our coaching classes you can whatsapp us on the numbers thank you and i wish you the very best for your exams